Hi everybody, Jonathan here with another VectorWiz video and today we're going to be taking a quick look at powering up your productivity using wall styles. Now obviously if you're an architect, using walls is one of the most important things you'll need to master and in my experience it's something not everybody really makes the most of in their workflow. So today's video is all about powering up your productivity using wall styles. So let's take a look at how this powerful function in VectorWorks can help you both do lovely plans, but also really effective 3D visuals as well. Okay, so a really good place to start is just to take a look at the basics of the wall tool before we look at the more complex wall styles and how these can benefit your workflow. So if you do want to, remember that you can drag off the uh, building shell tab, just so you can kind of list all your objects down here. That also is quite nice, a little tip that you can actually switch over to other palettes while you're working. Other than that though, if you do want to, just click number nine, which is the keyboard shortcut for the wall tool. So there we go, number nine. Now, if you look up onto the mode bar, you'll see all the different modes for drawing the walls. And basically, if you click onto this option here, the wall preferences will be probably defaulting to just a generic wall. So if we just type in a generic wall thickness, maybe 350, the only other thing that I'm actually going to do is switch over to insertion options. And what you can do here is either put the height of the walls in or type in at layer wall height. So the determined by bounds comes up. And this means that the walls will be determined by whatever your layer height is. Definitely my preferred method. Now there are some other options in here, but we don't really need to look at these right now. There's textures we can look at as well. I would recommend with this one you put it on to component textures, you'll see why later. And finally the data, obviously you're welcome to input this, but you wouldn't do this early on. Now we're not going to save this as a wall style right now. We're basically just going to click OK and just go off and draw a bit of a building. Let's just give ourselves a bit more space and off we go. Just designing and if we want to remember that you can type in sort of six meters uh, 3m for meters and so on just design a very quick little building let me just align to this point here drop down and come back in and basically when you get to the close point don't worry if you don't close it particularly well you can always get your wall join tool to tidy up those joins now if i look at these walls in 3d um they won't actually necessarily be three-dimensional right now but you can actually type in um, the layer height to alter this. So all you need to do here, if you want them three dimensional, is put in an elevation of zero, and let's say we want those three 600, let's type in that height there, and those walls you'll notice will project up to that particular height. So let's start working with wall styles. Now, one of my favorite things to do here is go Command R, my, bring up my resources palette, and you'll notice that I've actually got a really nice file in my favorites, which I've added, called JRA Walls. Now this is a file that I've used for many years and developed over the years, and it's got some really nice wall types in that are all classed up particularly nicely and very straightforwardly. But this is really just a starting point. So if I do want to, I could actually drag and drop one of my wall styles, for example, on a single wall. You'll notice you get the wall replacement dialog popping up, um, so if the wall is a bit thicker, you're going to want to anchor one of these sides. I would always recommend like the inside face is the right side, or if it's the external, which is more important, the left side. Now while you're here, you're going to probably want to uh, replace heights potentially. You might want to replace classes and textures for sure, and rejoin walls. Doing the data and the anagos is kind of up to you whether you want to do that. So let's click OK, and you can see I've now upgraded that particular wall but it isn't exactly what I was looking for. Okay, so a really nice workflow here, I find is to right click and actually open my walls file. Now this is a file that's available on my website on the store and you're more than welcome to have a quick look. It's got some nice instructions on how to use it as well. So if we double click onto the wall types themselves, you'll notice that basically there's a massive, let's just hide this little palette here, file of wall types all broken down but the really nice thing is if you look at them in 3D, you can get some really nice previews. So what I really like about this workflow is you can basically click and select a few of the different wall types that you might like to use in your project. Just kind of copy those in. Now we can always alter them in a minute. Let's just copy a few of those in. And basically this is often what I would recommend you do. You go into your file and basically just sort of find a bit of space and paste those wall types. Now, it may be that some of those have already been brought into the file, so I'll just give that one a slightly different name. Let's revise that to A, 
and we'll just kind of click um, replace in this circumstance. Good, okay, so those walls have now come into the file. A little extra trick is to right click on my workspace and align and distribute these walls just to kind of neaten them up and give them a nice equal distribution just so we've kind of got them there as a little sample. Okay, so now what we can do is use a wonderful tool called the eyedropper tool. So either eyedropper on my particular workspace, uh, check out my enhanced workspace if you haven't got this already, pick up that wall type and basically use it to drop down. Now you'll notice that the wall type is actually changing the style. So very effectively, that was a really quick upgrade. Now if you do want to, you can also select multiple wall types here. Okay, so we'll just try this one more time with the eyedropper tool and drop down. You'll notice that now it will replace all of them. So really, just to summarize, drag and drop will do a single wall type. Doing them all with the selection tool will actually, let's do that one more time, basically have them all change in one go for you, which is really nice. So I've just got one more to do there. Okay, great. So here we are with my basic building with these different wall types. They look pretty good, both in plan. Uh, tell you what, we'll get rid of those for now. We don't really need those. They look great in plan and they look really, really nice in 3D. Okay, so let's take things a little bit further. If we want to uh, put some openings in, we can obviously get our window and door tool. But what I want to show you here is I've already got a layer here that I'm just going to flick onto where I've actually done some of this work already. You'll notice that what I've got here is different wall closure. So I really want to talk about this for a second. So here I've got some windows in this wall. And you'll notice we've got this really nice um, sort of reveal on the external. Possibly if I spin around on the inside, you'll see some different sort of things going on on the reveals inside, like these ones here have a bit of a splay as well. Okay, so let's take a look at how wall styles work with different wall closures. And now this is a project I did a little while ago for a really nice little eco home. And you can see I've got a really nice sort of simple model with a few different wall styles, uh, timber walls and stone walls incorporated in it. Now if I go down and look at my wall at the moment, you'll see it's pretty straightforward. So let's go and edit this wall style. So click edit style in object info. You'll notice that all the parameters come up and you can really understand the breakdown of all the components of the wall. Now if you do want to change any of these thicknesses, let's say I want to change that to uh, 150 to make it a little bit thicker, that's fine. I can just type in and change. All of these elements can be duplicated and moved around in the order they are. And you will notice that they're all really nicely classed up as well, which means that I can easily change the class graphics of all of those components. So when I click on to the edit, all of the graphics come from class. Now this is one of the beauties of setting up wall styles. Okay, so I won't be talking about materials right now, but that will be for another video as well. Now what I want to show you is that if we go down to wall closure inserts, these walls actually do have some wall closure turned on. Now you're not currently seeing this, and I'll explain why in a second, but let's uh, make this a little bit bigger. Let's over egg this and make it say uh, 200 mil. So you can see now uh, the preview changed a little bit there. Let's click over to profile insets. Now this is where if you do want to, you can actually set the different profiles of insets into the wall as well. We'll leave that for now. And finally, I'm gonna to go to wrappings. And this is basically where you can tell certain components to wrap to different components uh, internally or externally as well. So if I do want to, I can kind of wrap these components back to other elements in there as well. Good, okay, so I'll actually uh, delete that last component because I'm not sure why we've got that in there. Let's click OK, and basically let's delete that last component. Good, okay, so I'm gonna click OK. Basically those walls will now all be replaced and I'll choose the right side so that the building doesn't actually get any smaller. Let's click OK. Watch what happens when I click OK and basically go to my windows and doors. So that first change comes in. But you notice you won't see the splays unless you do something quite important. So this is in the window and door style itself. Go to plugin options, and here we must enable the wall closure. Now we can enable it for all the different sides, for the left, for the right, and so on. Let's just click OK and accept the defaults. So now you can see this lovely wall closure coming in around those windows and doors. And um, let's just do that on these uh, sort of other side as well and see how this works. Let's do it on these windows here. So basically, if I want to, I can just simply select those windows, go to plugin options, 
and use the wall closure. Ah, these are actually window styles. We'll find that window and door style. So let's best way to do that is to select, right click and locate it first of all. Okay, so now we've located it, we can actually right click and do plugin option style. And here you see the wall closure, fantastic. We'll click okay. And that should affect all windows right around the project of that particular type. So we've got those splays in. The only other thing that we might need to correct is of course just edit the style and turn off that full width jam. So we'll go to the jam there, turn off the wall depth and let's just plug in a normal number here. So hopefully this is sort of making you understand that wall and window uh, styles also really work together. Just to give you those sort of different impacts and different effects, you can see it happening on those window styles there. These obviously are different style of windows so they're unaffected. So wall and window styles, uh, really, really powerful functioning in Vectorworks. I definitely recommend taking a look at my walls library on the uh, store, if you like. Lots of good starter walls here and lots of space for you to actually make your own different styles. Now, the nice thing about all of these is they're all classed up really, really sensibly and they're very easy for you to adapt and change for your own projects. So I definitely recommend if you're not using uh, wall styles already in your designs. The other really nice thing is you can actually set them up so they've got like different levels of detail simply with a click of a button. But I will do that on another video if you're not sure how to do that right now. Well, thanks for watching everybody. Uh, I'd love to see you subscribing to the channel. We're about to hit 15,000 subscribers and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye bye.